Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more AFL 23. Here today on the channel, we have Season 2, Episode 9 of my Brisbane Lions Manager Coach Career Series. Here today, we've got a match against the Essendon Bombers, and they currently sit in 6th. We are currently out of the top 8, but here today, we want to try and break into it, if we can, and hopefully get a win against Essendon at the Gamba. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. It is now round 21. There's only a couple games left of this season, and we want to try and uh, end it with a bang, as it were. Unfortunately, Lester gets caught out of position. Sicily goes up with the pack. Andrews gets brought down. The handball is not favorable. And Essendon find a free player towards the top of the goal square. And they're going to go back and try and slot this one. The Bombers to try and score the first goal in this opening term. He shoots. He scores. And converts it between the big sticks. Unfortunately, we go a goal down. First quarter only. Still plenty of football to play. McInerney wins the ruck contest. Essendon with a couple nice hand balls. Gardner doesn't get beat, but it's a good ball in. It's spoiled, it's crumbed, and somehow Essendon convert from it. It's a two goal game here at the Gabba. The big O in wins it. Simpkin can't get to it. Couple decent handballs by the Bombers. Gardner comes up this time with the Specky, but it falls to McDonald, Tip, and Woody, who drills it home. The Bombers have three back to back, and our top eight hopes and dreams are now sliding. Brisbane need to hit the scoreboard. The big O wins it. Once again. Couple good handballs by Essendon, but Lester now has an opportunity. It gets spoilt to Danaher. He takes a bounce and then goes for goal and scores Brisbane's first goal of this match. Danaher from 45 on the run. Wasn't going to miss from there. As Jake Kelly comes off. Berry. Clears it from the 45. Redmond's off as well. Looks like maybe Essendon potentially did way too many interchanges there. And although they look like they were dominating in this first term, Brisbane have brought it back within a goal. Kicking two in a row. This time, Zach Bailey putting it through the big sticks. The Big O wins another ruck contest with 26 seconds remaining. Sicily now goes up. Essendon get the handball free, and it's a quick rebound as well. It's a textbook finish ultimately for the Bombers, and they increase the lead by two goals. Both sides looking clinical ultimately in this match. Holding the ball was paid for whatever reason. And McDonald, Tip and Woody has a shot on goal for the Bombers. Number five. And he puts it just to the right of screen. And it's the first miss kick of the game. As the Lions look a little bit shell-shocked and, and sloppy are a couple of the words that come to mind. They need to switch on and show a little bit of bravery and courage like Gardner just then unfortunately it just gets absolutely smashed in there and a beautiful goal nearly sails through for the Bombers Sicily trying to bring it out from the back manages to cover a lot of distance and it's fallen to Josh Dunkley who sloppily handballs it away Brisbane with a golden opportunity to capitalise on that didn't Essendon chip it back and now, they have a, now, and now they have another set shot at goal. They chip it even further in. And thankfully, Sicily punches it. But 
The Lions can't afford to lose this one. A draw would be fine. But to keep our top eight hopes alive, we really need to win this match. Couple good handballs. The big O finds Ben King. The mark gets spilled. Bailey picks up the crumbs. And the crowd erupts because Bailey scored two goals in this match. Back in the center square. Essendon's midfield. Looks pretty good. And unfortunately, they take a mark on the 50. Our defense is beaten once again. Essendon to extend it just that little bit further. And unfortunately, they don't. They've missed three shots at goal here. They could be seven goals up. Sicily trying to bring it out from the back. Danaher comes up. He gets the grab. Actually, it was Hipwood ultimately. And there's a lot of Lions in our forward 50. Ben King this time gets it. And this would be a huge confidence booster if we can put this one in the back of the net. Ben King misses <laughs> to the right. The goal-kicking machine this season, unfortunately, fades it. Ainsworth comes up, unfortunately gets dropped. And it is pinged for holding, holding the ball. Essendon look wicked in this match, but unfortunately... Both forward lines are ablaze. So, I guess from the neutral perspective, it's going to be a lot of entertaining goals. Leicester spills it. Essendon turn and pivot. And he threads the needle. Essendon get another. Super hot this match. Super hot footy. The ball is ping-ponging <laughs> back and forth as we go into halftime Lions 3-1-19 the Bombers 5-3-33 still plenty of football to be played here today at the Gabba the Lions should be doing better at home McInerney in the ruck no Draper of course as he now plays for GWS Yes, believe it or not, Sam Draper in the off-season was traded to the Giants, getting a huge pay rise, joining his uh, fellow teammates in Sydney. <laughs> now, probably not a bad signing. Uh, probably one of the youngest and high-quality Ruckmans available, so I can kind of see why, but I think it would be a little bit strange. He's a bit of a cult hero at Essendon. Let me know in the comments what you think. Would it be kind of weird seeing Draper with his iconic hair in a GWS kit. Let me know. Speaking of iconic hair, uh, Hipwood got rid of his, and he looks a little bit weird because of it. I do think shorter hair probably suits him. The ponytail was always a bit weird, but whatever. He brings it back within a one-goal game. The Lions look good here. Hipwood hands it off, but unfortunately, Ben King with the momentum runs it over the line. That's one of my pet peeves in this game, actually. That you can have so much momentum, and once you receive the ball, the player is all, already automatically sprinting and running. So, I hope this goal... Well, I hope this game isn't decided by that potential goal there. If it's by a goal, I'm going to be furious, because... We should have converted that one. Only not doing so because of game mechanics. And probably a bug, more or less. Simkin manages to receive the footy on an angle and somehow scores a sensational finish there. Simkin has been a wicked pickup in this midfield. And I think he would actually probably be a realistic signing, to be honest. 
I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up at the Gabba in the next couple of years. He's such a young, dynamic midfielder. Uh, let's face it, I don't think he's going to spend the entirety of his career at North Melbourne. I'm surprised he hasn't left sooner, to be honest. If not, probably a Victorian club. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Melbourne either. As Clayton Oliver and him are fellow teammates at teenage and high school level. You may or may not know that. Playing for the same side. <laughs> that would have been a wicked midfield. But uh, I have a feeling that it's more likely that Simpkin would probably go to Melbourne rather than Oliver going to North Melbourne. <laughs> Bailey manages to get it back. He slots this, and the Lions go in front for the first time in this match. Essendon slightly slipping. 38-33. Very, very narrow margin in this match. Simpkin finds Ben King. And he gets spilled again here, potentially saving another goal. Lions should be at least you know, two, three goals in front. Nick Cox off. Archie Perkins on. And they somehow nearly spray it out of bounds. But it's going to be a fourth quarter thriller here at the Gabba. Who can crucially deliver the winning score, goal, and uh, final blow in this match. Here we go. Essendon, unfortunately, hit it towards Gardner, who holds on. And McDonald, Tip and Woody manages to get the grab to tie things up here today. McDonald, Tip and Woody, slots it. Cool, calm, and collectedly for the Bombers. They're back in this one. 39-39, all scores tied. The Lions need to answer quickly, but unfortunately, they allow a ball to come into their defensive 50 Sicily with the spoil, but they hit the rebound so, so well, and the Bombers take the lead with two minutes respect to spare in this one. What a finish. What a magnificent goal for the Bombers. And they get it again here. McCluggage somehow wins it. Cameron finds Simpkin, who handballs it off to Charlie Cameron. He hits it from the 45. He nails it back, and there have been two goals within 20 seconds. An absolute blinder there by Charlie Cameron, and we're still back in this match. But only time will tell who's going to win it. It is so back and forth. Both sides look likely to win. Essendon win this duel in the midfield. Gardner comes out with the specky. Big punch only towards a Essendon player. Somehow we get the handball. A couple nice quick handballs. McCluggage in the midfield now. Needs to not waste this forward 50 entry. He just manages to waltz on in and chips it. Cool, calm and collectedly to Rayner. And the Lions from about 35 out. Need to hit the scoreboard on this one. Cam Rayner will have the distance and slots it well. Him or potentially Bailey, I would probably bla uh, back to kick that one. And it's an outstanding finish. But the Lions need to win this contest again to stay in front. They chip it in. Sicily wins it. But it's a spilling football. It's another mistimed handball. McInerney goes inside. Dunkley, and I've probably over handballed too much there. Leicester with the big punch. McDonald, Tip and Woody. It goes again. It's going to be a mark. And the Bombers need to kick this one to bring it back. To tie the match. The Bombers convert. 51-51. We are tying here with 33 minutes to spare. And this ruck contest, this midfield battle will decide it. Essendon win it. Ball in. 
Sicily Gardner. Gardner wins it. He tops it to the 50. Danaher, someone needs to mark. It gets spilled, and Danaher gets bugged. But Charlie Cameron just needs to hit it quick. He puts it to the top of the goal square, which is incredibly risky. It rebounds to Rayner, and that's probably it. It's actually been pinged holding the ball. McInerney comes up, wins a specky, six seconds remaining, needs to give it and go. He plays on, he accidentally handballs, Rayner, uh, Danaher just hits it. And it sails through for a goal. <laughs> I don't know how the Brisbane Lions got away with that one. Charlie Cameron just should have whacked it instead of chipping it to the top of the square. A Lions player got, got held and pinged for holding the ball. McInerney wins a specky. He plays on, doesn't get caught, and somehow Danaher scores a winner, uh, keeping our top eight hopes alive. And that was probably one of the most intense games uh, I've ever played in AFL 23. I think it was like incredibly even. Like They've worked really well on the balancing now. So, look, six-goal game going into round 22. It's still mathematically possible, um, but only time will tell if we are going to make the top eight still and have finals if not this season was a little bit of a write-off anyway just due to the balancing and probably the bugged games we played which we were Im impossible which were impossible to win uh due to the marking and spoiling bug but anyway stay tuned for season two uh episode 10 coming out the exact same time tomorrow and uh yeah make sure to take care of yourselves have a fantastic rest of your day like and subscribe if you haven't already my name is bean simsey and i will see you in the next one cheers